Uman every year and is loving Rabbeinu and, and that's it, reading the Lukutim Moran all the time and doing his poem with everything. But he smokes grass and he can't stop. There is nothing like that can't stop. And he's, he's got and such a taiva that he tries. Such he a tries. taiva. He makes him, so, it makes him sick. No one said that you that the person that have a desire can drop it. No one said. Just you can fight against it. And the weapon that we have is davening. No one said that the person have the power to conquer the Yetzirah. We know that he is made out of fire and we made out of flesh. And this is it. He is winning. Uh -huh. And this is what we learned in the Gemara Akdasha, that il male akadosh baruchu that if without HaKadosh Baruch Hu that is helping us, the Yetzirah will win us. So, the, beat us. So the only way that we can win is by davening to Hashem Itbarach. A person have to dedicate 30 minutes a day to daven on his problem. One is sick with his desire for women. He's crazy. Every woman that he can see, that he see, become crazy. One is addicted to smoking grass. One is dr running after alcohol. One is chasing after money. One having a desire to be a rabbi. Everyone oh. with his craziness. Right. And on that, if you see that it's ruining you, you should take it seriously to work on that on the field. To talk to Hashem, Itbarach, and to scream your heart out in the field to cry to Hashem Itbarach, to tell him, look at me, I'm not learning. Like a dog that is going back to his vomit every day on the same mistake, on the same mistake, on the same mistake. I know that it's wrong, I heard that it's wrong, I tasted that it's wrong, I feel that it's wrong, it's ruined my life and I'm running like crazy after the desire. Save me Hashem, I'm so stupid, I'm not learning. Help me, save me, day after day, day after day. And if a person think to himself, how am I going to say the same Diburim every day, one day after the other, what, I'm a robot, I'm a machine, to say the same Diburim? It's getting bored, I'm getting bored, it's not my job, why, why should I do that? It's not logic, what, it's a Sidur, it has to be Itbodedut. In Itbodedut, you have to talk to Hashem, to, to reveal everything. So what, I'm going to mention the same things? So when you're making Itbodedut, you have to remember that every word that you're saying, it's a mitzvah. And when you're making mitzvot, every mitzvah, it's like a diamond. And they think about it as like that they're saying to you, now those are your diamonds, count them. If they're going to be in the same value and in the same size, you won't have no problem to count another one and another one and another one and another one. You're going to count them, even though that they're in the same size and in the same value. That's just, just, just the thing is that we're not... We value our Itbodedviyot. We don't understand how huge is the mitzvah of talking to Hashem Itbarach. Bakadosh Baruch Hu told us that Naftali, the name Naftali, it means like the word Fila. Fila, it's the Naftali, Naftulim, means bondings. That Fila, it's like the word Naftali, mm -hmm. that it means relationship, bond your, your, yourself to Hashem Itbarach. When a person is talking to Hashem Itbarach, he is tying himself to Hashem Itbarach. If you have more tefillot, you have more relationship with Hashem Itbarach. If you have even more tefillot, you're going to have more share with Hashem Itbarach. Every word that you're saying in the Itbodedut, that word is connecting you with Hashem Itbarach. If you're going to say all of your heart, you're going to be 100% with Hashem. If you're going to reveal everything, if you're going to tell Him everything, if you're going to ask on everything, you're going to be with Him in 100%, face to face, like Moshe Rabbeinu is talking to Hashem Itbarach. On everything, davening on everything, asking everything from Him, this is it. Even if you keep falling? Yes. What do you care if you're falling or not? It's your mitzvah to stand up. Someone is asking you to stand up. Every, no, no, chas shalom. He gave you the mitzvah of the tshuva. Mitzvah of the tshuva is explaining you that even if you're sinning, you have a tikkun. If HaKadosh Baruch Hu would not give us the mitzvah of tshuva, so for sure we all have to be righteous people with no sinning. But if you saw that HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave you a tikkun for a sin, it means that the person can sin. So what can you do? So you are sinning. Well, you shouldn't sin. Of course he shouldn't sin, but if he is sinning, he okay, there is okay. a tikkun for that. He's asking, what a person... 
אז מחילה, I'm sorry, this no, not, was not my, my purpose. First, if a person has a shalom is falling to have a rach, has a shalom, it have to be that he's got a tikkun. It have to be that he's got a tikkun. What is tikkun is to hold on with mitzvah tachuva. What it means to confess. Even if it's filthy things that you're embarrassed to say to Hashem Yitbarach, what do you think that Hashem was not there? Hashem was not over there in that darkness that you were in. So what if you're sinning? So what if you are a disgrace in your eyes? So what? Also you can look at your son and you can say that he's doing this, that he's embarrassing you, that he's a disgrace. But you want to accept him even that he is a disgrace. So Hashem wants to accept you even that you are a disgrace. If we all were disgraced because that we are disgraced, because we were sinning, so there is no tikkun, there is no hope for no one. Because en tzadik ba'aretz asher yaseh tov velo yechta. There is no person that is not sinning, no one that was in earth that didn't do any mistake. If you are here, if a person, think about it, just the fact that a person, the biggest tzaddik of them all, an angel in a figure of a human being, after he's eating, he's going to the toilet. Even Rabbi Nachman Mibreslev was going to the toilet. Even Abal Shem Tov, even Moshe Rabbeinu. He was cleaning himself after it. This is it. What can you do? Everyone. So it's a disgrace for a tzaddik even that he is not sinning, that he, that he is a human being. Like we learned in Masechet Chagiga, that the Gemara is saying three things that a human being is like animals, like the cattle, like behemot. One of them that he's eating and he's going to the toilet. It's a disgrace for a tzaddik. Even that he's not sinning, it's a disgrace that you're not like an angel, that you are inside of a thick body, that you're going to the toilet, it's a disgrace. Even if you're the best human being in the world, it's a disgrace that you are a creature made out of flesh and bone. It means that he, you are a disgrace. It means that you are very, very small, that you're nothing, that HaKadosh Baruch Hu can crush you in a minute. It means that you're worthless, that only Hashem can save you from the angels. It means that the angels, that they are even in a lower position than you because you are in Neshama and they are only angels, they can win and you are losing for them. Even if you are the biggest tzaddik, if HaKadosh Baruch Hu will not save you, you are going to lose. So you are a disgrace, even if you are not sinning. So the tikkun of doing tshuva, it's a tikkun for all of the levels, for all of the human beings. This is our tikkun. This is the geula that the persons, the people are going to accept that we need to do tshuva and not to run from it. If we're running from it, it means that we're avoiding our purpose. Our purpose is not to be tzaddikim. Our purpose is to be people of truth, to admit, to take responsibility on our actions, to admit, to do tshuva, to fix it. If you have to po apologize now, now to, for a person that you stolen money from him, so what, now you're not gonna do that because you don't want him to think that you are a thief? So, in heaven you're going to understand that? Who said that you're going to forgive you in heaven? What are you going to do? You're going to back in, come back into this world to pay, pay him back? Admit, and uh, get all of that disgrace as a, as a tikkun. This is your tshuva, that you feel bad. Rabbi Nachman asked Rabbi Nathan, do you become real red when you confess to Hashem it Barach, when you're standing in front of Hashem in the Bodeduyot? This is how we have to feel, the disgrace. But it's not bad. This is your present. This is your Yeshua. Instead, all right, hide your sins, hide your avonot, put them inside of you. You're going to stink with them the rest of your life. And in the world you come, you're going to pay punishment that you can never imagine. Because the person that is, that is coming with his avonot to the world to come, there is no mercy in the world to come. In the world to come, there is no mercy. There is Truth, there is justice. The mercy is in this world. That HaKadosh Baruch Hu is giving us the option to do tshuva, to fix ourselves here, to judge ourselves. This is the mercy of Hashem in Barach. That He is letting us judge ourselves instead that court is going to judge us. Yes. Rabbi Nachman says, I came to a high level because I got up more times than others. Just what? I got up. As well as Come to fall and fall. Fall and fall. Yes. Rabbi Nachman. Wonderful. Wonderful point. <coughs> wonderful point. Rabbi Nachman said in, in another place something so similar to that thing that 
that when a, that the difference between two tzaddikim he is what is the difference between two tzaddikim how much effort they put in rising after their fallings the result that a person is bigger tzaddik than the rest is that he's coming more strongly standing up back on his legs from his fallings more times this is the this is the different this is how you're climbing because because to fall it's not in your choice at all if you're gonna fall or not for sure I promise you all and I love you very much no it's your it maybe it is but it's not in your power because a Kadosh Baruch Hu, if he gonna decide to educate a person by pushing him to an Avera because this is what a Kadosh Baruch Hu understand that this is the only way that he gonna fix himself that person gonna fall there is it's written in Shara Gilgulim, in the book of Ariya Kadosh Bishara Gilgulim, in Rabbi Chaim Vital, Rabbi Chaim Vital was complaining to Ariya Kadosh on himself. He was telling to him that he's not worthy. How can it be that you saying that I'm your student, I'm not worthy? And he said, and I know about myself that I have bad midot. For sure that none of us can talk about Rabbi Chaim Vital. If we were looking about Rabbi Chaim Vital, we would shake in and scared because he was such a huge, high-level tzaddik that we can never imagine. But Rabbi Chaim Vital, with his humility, he was looking at himself and he saw that really he had bad midot. It was not an, a, 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 an illusion that he was in. Really, he was finding himself angry and acting in a way that he didn't saw it, that it's um, 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 proper, pro, pro, proper, proper. proper to, to, to act. And he asked Hari Kadosh, how can it be that you're saying to me that I'm your main student, that I'm the, 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 the student that you, that Kadosh Baruch Hu chose to bring all of the Torah of you, the Hari Kadosh? to him, and I know that in this generation there is huge people. In that generation of Ariya Kadosh, Rabbi Chaim Vital, the tzaddikim that were walking over there, surrounding them in Tzfat and in Tveria, they were huge, huge, huge tzaddikim in the same generation. And Ariya Kadosh didn't choose none of them, only Rabbi Chaim Vital. When Rabbi Chaim Vital couldn't understand that, and he said, how can it be? I know that I have lackings. Ariya Kadosh Baruch Hu answered to him. He told him, you have one mistake. Your mistake is that you think that they're judging you in heaven like that you are judging yourself. But the truth is that the trial in heaven is totally different than how that you are judging yourself. Like, and he's giving him an example. Like David HaMelech. When David HaMelech become to be a king after that he was a son of all of that situation that he was born into, all of that darkness that he was born into, the change that was for him to go from that poverty, from that low place that he came to the world in, to the kingdom, to be a king, it was too strong. And he had to go back into darkness to balance himself. To fall and to stand and to fall and to stand, it balances the person. If you're if you're throwing something, it has to go here and like in a car. If you have something that is scaring you and you're turning to the left, you have to turn too much to the right to balance yourself. A Rambam is saying that if a person is sinning, going to a direction too strongly into one direction, you have to go strong back to the other side, even that it's not the middle, and we're looking for the middle. To balance yourself, you have to go to the sides. So he told Ariya Kadosh, told Rabbi Chaim Vital, and on that scene, so to speak, of David Amelech, that he fell down back into filth, into left side, on that, Akadosh Baruch Hu was not angry at him at all. And they haven't judged him on that at all. And you, with your angers and with your thoughts that you have so many lackings that you think that you have, HaKadosh Baruch Hu is not judging you on that at all. He is not expecting you to be another person than you are. He knows who you are and he's not judging you on that. There is no choice that you're going to survive without your lackings, with your stupid desires, lusts, 
with your lies, with your angers. This is you. You have to have those lackings to survive. And HaKadosh Baruch Hu is not angry on those. Just what? HaKadosh Baruch Hu wants you to do what that is in your hands. Mm. What that you are capable. Ka'asher yadcha. In the things that your hand find. Baze, in that you should put your effort. If you want to fix yourself in things that you cannot deal with, it's not your job now. You have so many things that you can do now. Small things. Start with them. Start with them. Start with the things that you are able to do. After that, you're going to get stronger. And then you're going to take care of the rest of the things. Step by step, level by level, day by day. One davening after the other. Another shahid bodedut. Another shahid bodedut. Another drive to Uman. Another mikveh. Another Shabbat. Another tzitzit. Another mitzvah. Another... One day you're going to have a mitzvah and mesirut nefesh that's going to change all of your balance. Something going to... And then, with all of that, you're going to be saved after 120. We don't need to be a tzaddikim today. It's not our job. Our job today is to accept that there is a tzaddik. There is a wonderful tzaddik that his name is Rabbi Nachman Ibreslev. Listen to his advice. Rabbi Nathan explained to us. Rabbi Nathan said, Moshe Rabbeinu gave us the Torah. And Rabbi Nachman is giving us the tools to make the Torah. So you have the Torah, now you should make it. It's all written. All of the halachot, we know exactly what it's allowed to do, what it's not allowed to do. If you don't know, there is rabbis that you can ask them all of the questions. Thousands of them you can ask, it's not a problem. Even questions about Ashkafa, about how to serve Hashem, Musar, Yitchazkut, thousands of books, wonderful. All of the paths are open. All of the doors are open. Sharet Shuvah, Lonin Alu. Just we have to walk inside to those doors, to look through those windows. So if you see that you're looking to other directions, work on that. Work on that, that you're going to... Chaven et raglecha. How you say chaven? Lechaven to... Direct. Direct. Direct your legs to the right direction. Point your legs, point your mind into this is our job, into the right direction. This is what we need to work on to convince our heart to serve Hashem, to convince our legs to, to serve Hashem, to convince our mind to serve Hashem, to convince our eyes to serve Hashem. This is what we have to do. Rabbi Nachman gave an advice to Rabbi Shmuel Isaac. There was one of the hugest tzaddikim, or talmidim of Rabbi, students of Rabbi Nachman Nibre Eslev. His name was Rabbi Shmuel Isaac. He was huge tzaddik even before he met Rabbi Nachman. He was a mekubal, he was doing, he had students, he was huge, huge talmid. A tzaddik, before he met Rabbi Nachman in Breslev, when he met Rabbi Nachman in Breslev, Rabbi Nachman told him, talk to your organs. Ledaber el ha'evarim. In your hit bodedut, he gave him an advice. He told him, talk to your organs. Tell your legs what you're going to do, legs, in the world to come. They're going to judge you. Where were you running to? What were you doing? Talk to your hands. Hands, hands, what are you doing? How you can sin any more? How can you touch things that you're not allowed to touch? How can you mm, do things that you're not allowed to do? How you're not afraid from fire of hell? You're gonna get burned in hell. You're gonna get punished. He, he told him, talk to the organs. After one, after a period of time, he came back to him. Rabbi Shmuel Isaac came back to Rabbi Nachman Ibrahim. He told him, listen, still my desires are making me crazy. Still my body is not listening to me. Rabbi Nachman told him, just continue. I gave you an advice, go with it. Just continue. After a lot of years, that after, even after Rabbi Nachman passed away, Rabbi Shmuel Isaac said that every time that he hears or he feels that there is an option shalom, to sin, to make an avera, something is getting closer, there is an issue, something like that, an, an, an option, his organs are become so weak, so tired, that he cannot stand, he cannot move his organs. They are surrendered. His organs surrender. This is it. He cannot send his arm to make an avera. He cannot send his mouth to say something that is not allowed. His mouth is shaking. You can convince yourself. By what? 
by continue doing the same thing daily. This is why the Torah is teaching us to make the mitzvot daily. Again, putting tefillin. Why not? Kadosh Baruch Hu could give you the mitzvah of tefillin once in a lifetime. Make tefillin and that this is going to be the mitzvah. No. Most of the mitzvot, it's mitzvot that are daily. You're doing it day after day, day after day. Only by that, only by that method, by that shita, that it's it's going to conquer you. Because actually the reason that we are sinning today, it's not because that there is a verdict on our heads, chas v'shalom, that because that we were sinning in our history, in our past, so now the punish is that we're going to sin today. This is not the reason. Because when a person is doing tshuva, and we all made tshuva, we all done tshuva, just we don't believe in our tshuva. We all done tshuva. The only, so by doing tshuva you become a tzaddik gamur. Rabbi Nachman Bresser said the person that remembers him become to be like a baby, baby that just reborn. So we all remembered him more than once in our lifetime. So we all become to be babies, right? So why are we still sinning? Because we used to sin. Because this is how we used to live our lives. This is how, what we love. This is our desires. This is what we used to do. So we keep on doing the same stupid Habitual. things. What? Habitual. Habitual? It's a uh, habit. It's habit. 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 Yes. Exactly. Yes. Habit. This is the reason why we're doing it again and again. Just because we're used to do that. And not because that this is punishment or something like that. So we have to educate ourselves back again from the beginning. Make a new start. Start over. Talk to Hashem Barach on the real way that you want to manage your life, to deal your life, to go, to, to, to lead your, your life in. And, and start talk to yourself. Start talk to Hashem. Ask Him. Indeed, but the we're talking to ourselves a lot of times. We're saying to ourselves, what's going on with you? I'm talking to myself a lot. And I'm not on medicines, Baruch Hashem. <laughs> we can talk to ourselves in the Itbodedut. This is the Itbodedut that Rabbeinu said, it calls Yishuv Adat. When Rabbeinu is saying Yishuv Adat, he's calling the Itbodedut Yishuv Adat. And Rav Shalom said that he was hearing Rabbi Levi Yitzhak Bender, that most of the times that Rabbi Levi Yitzhak Bender was talking about Itbodedut, he was calling it Yishuv Adat. Yishuv Adat, it's something that you're doing without Hashem. You don't need Hashem to make Yishuv Adat, so to speak. We need Hashem for everything. It's all by Siyat Adishmaya. But actually, when you're making Yishuv Adat, you're doing it between you to yourself. You and yourself are talking now. You become to be a good friend of yourself, and you're checking what's going on with me. This is how I should spend my life. This is how I should wake up in the morning. This is what I want to do in the evening. This is what I want to do in the afternoon. This is Yeshua Badat. What am I doing? This is how I want to learn. I'm in the yeshiva from the morning till the afternoon. This is how I want to spend my time in the yeshiva. This is called Yeshua Badat. This is the main part of the Bodedut that you're talking to yourself. You're checking yourself. You're watching out your, on yourself. What's going on with me? Am I allowed to do those things that I'm doing? Maybe it's not allowed to do those things that I'm doing. Maybe I have to check it. Maybe I need to ask. Maybe I need to consult a rab, a rabbi, someone. Maybe I'm going to talk to a friend about my troubles. Maybe I need to get an advice. The person, the only reason, <coughs> Rabbi Nachman said, the only reason why people don't do tshuva is because they don't have yeshuva that. Because they're not checking themselves what's going on. They're just running all of the time. No, I have to have money. I have to have my parnasa. No, I have to learn Torah now. And this is it. 120 years passed away. And this is it. And now he's going to be judged on every thought and every action that he made. And he never thought about what he's doing in his life. This is why Rabbeinu told us, stop. Stop the train. Go. One hour a day. Every day. Look inside. Deep. Think. Who are you? Who you really are? What is your pur purpose in life? What are the things that you're obligated to do? What are the th things that you have to change? What are the things that are ruined for you? Everything we have to check in the Bodedut. It's a wonderful present. Rabbeinu said, Ma'alak dola ve'elyonamin akol. Bigger and higher than everything else that he gave us. And he gave us Uman Rosh Hashanah. And he gave us Tikkun Aklali. And he gave us all of our connection to Torah and Mitzvot. At least on myself I have to say that it's the only connection. I'm learning, I'm learning Shulchan Aruch because Rabbi Nachman Yosef said to learn Shulchan Aruch. 
I'm learning, this is me. I'm learning Torah Kedosha because Rabbi Nachman Libresev said to learn Torah Kedosha. I never found power inside of myself to keep the Torah Kedosha without the advice of Rabbi Nachman. Only because I feel that Rabbi Nachman, he is tzaddik, he is the real tzaddik, he is giving me the power to keep the Torah Kedosha. This is why I am, small one, I am keeping Shabbat, Tarat HaMishpacha, try to educate my kids like we should, try to make all of the mitzvot like we're making them, going to the mikveh every day, hit bodedut, mitzvat ha-tshuva. Who ever heard, tell me from all of the places, all of the yeshivot that you know, that you're familiar with, rabbis, who is making the mitzvah of tshuva? Who is confessing on his sins, except of people that heard it from Rabbi Nachman in Breslev? Even Litvaks, even the Hasidim learned Harambam so many times how to make mitzvah tshuva. No one is doing it. I'm sorry to say, no one is making it. No one, because on every sin, you have to do tshuva. Every sin, every sin, every mistake that you're doing in your Avodat Hashem, you have to confess on it. Is there any person outside that is not doing shayit bodedut, that he is confessing on all of his day? I'm sorry to say, I, I, I haven't met. I haven't met. I haven't met. Even if so, they're going to say that in the vidu that they're doing confession, it's enough. Rambam is saying that you, you have to confess, you have to, to live rot, to, to explain all of the details, to tell Hashem in Barach, I was stealing ten agorot. You have to mention. You cannot say, I was stealing. It's not enough to say, I was stealing. You have to say, I was stealing ten shekels from Bloni Almoni in that day. Mm. Only then you can regret on that. If you're just saying to Hashem, Hashem, I'm sorry, I'm a thief, I have a desire. It's not tshuva. It's imaginations. Tshuva, if you want to erase the sin, you have to confess. You have to say precisely what was your avera and that you regret and that you don't want to do that anymore. And only the hugest tzaddikim, only Rabbi Nachman is giving us that power to go and to do that. I never saw a person that is doing it. If there is, it's the, the hugest tzaddikim of the generation that are doing it without Rabbi Nachman in Breslev. And also I believe in 100% that they're getting it somehow through Rabbeinu. But because Rabbi Nachman Ibrasev said it also, not because I'm counting on myself and not because that I'm admiring him. Because Rabbi Nachman Ibrasev said that when a Kadosh Baruch Hu is pulling down to this world a tzaddik, that the tikkun of the generation is going by him, so no one can do tshuva without him. If Rabbi Nachman, if someone wanted to build a Mishkan for a Kadosh Baruch Hu and to invest a lot more money that Moshe Rabbeinu invest in the Mishkan, he was making a whole building of Avodah Zarah and it was not worthy for Hashem Barach at all. But if a person was giving a, 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 a nail, a, a sika, to, to, to the Mishkan of Moshe Rabbeinu, it was included in the Holy Mishkan and he was part of the Mishkan. And to do things on your own, you cannot. If there is Moshe in that generation, this is it. You have to serve Hashem by Moshe. When Korach said to Moshe Rabbeinu, we're all Kedoshim, all of us we're holy, we all can serve Hashem, Betocham Hashem, Hashem is with, it, with us. The earth opened the mouth and swallowed that person mm -hmm. for generations. Why? Because he contradicted the tzaddik. There is tzaddik. HaKadosh Baruch Hu sent him. You see all of the Baalei Tshuva. You see all of the healing of this generation. What can we say? Chazak Baruch Hu. Chazak, Chazak, Benit Chazak.